the first problem here asks us to solve the equation for x, uh, which requires us to know some of the key features here that are happening within our equation. So notice, first thing, that right here we have a number and a letter touching. So whenever you have a number that is touching another letter, that is a type of multiplication. All right. It could be a number being multiplied to a set of parentheses. Uh, it could just be a number and a letter, like you see with 2x. Um, but any time a number and a letter touch, there's multiplication going on. And usually, to undo multiplication, you would divide. Now, in this case, we have a fraction going on. So a fraction, such as 1 half, is already a type of division. And so what we could do is we could do something called fraction busting. All right. We could take what's in the denominator of the fraction, in this case it's a 2, and we could times it to every single term that's in the fraction or in the equation in order to cause that fraction to cancel out. All right. Another way that you could remove a fraction from an equation is you could convert the fraction to a decimal. So you could call that 0.5x. Um, or really, I could pick whatever number I want as long as it's even it'll cause that one half to cancel out. So those are some options here. If that fraction was outside of the parentheses, so say there was parentheses on here, I could distribute that fraction, but I'd still be left to the one half X. All right, so let's go ahead and let's give that a shot. All right, so I'm going to multiply the entire equation by one half or by two to get rid of the one half. All right, now it's worth knowing this is a type of distribution. All right, so that 2 is going to get sent to every single term. Now, if I had an equation that had something like this, uh, x plus 5 over 2 plus 7 equals 12. Oh, that was a 7, wasn't it? There we go. So say I had an equation like this. When I go to distribute, I would distribute here. So it would cancel out with the 2 and leave you with x plus 5. I would distribute here to the 7 and here to the 12. So be careful when you are fraction busting when you have a massive fraction. Don't distribute to the or to the numerator. Alrighty. So one half x times two. One half of two is one, so that'll be one x. Two times negative two is negative four. And two times fourteen is twenty-eight. And so now that I've done that, I don't have to worry about that scary fraction being in there. All right, so then of course I have four being subtracted here. So the inverse operation of that four would be to add. And so 28 plus four gives me 32. Make sure that when you do these inverse operations that you're doing it to both sides of the equal sign. Don't do it to the same side of the equal sign, do it to different sides. The other feature that we have here is we have a uh, a mixture problem. All right, so with a mixture problem, we're usually taking two objects that we are purchasing and we're comparing them to some kind of total. All right, so this is kind of the, uh, the general shape that we have for our equation that we're going to use. So if I read this word problem, it says Olive is making pesto. She buys three bunches of basil for $6 a piece. The pine nuts are $15 per cup. How many cups of pine nuts can Olive purchase if she has $60? Okay. So the first thing that we see in here is this description of the basil. All right. So that's what's going to go in this first blank is my basil. The other object that we're buying is pine nuts. So everything that I know about pine nuts is going to go right here. I'm going to put P nuts because I don't have space to write pine, sorry. All right, and then in this last blank, we're going to have whatever total we have. Uh, total. The total's the easy one, right? We see that she has 60 bucks, so we're going to put 60 in that space. So if I'm thinking about the basil, we have three bunches of basils for $6 a piece. So to get a total amount of money for that, right, you would take that three bunches and times it by the six dollars. 
and that'll get you an amount of money for that total. Now, looking at this structure, I have a quantity times money. So here I should also have a quantity times money. All right. So I don't know how many pine nuts we have, right? How many cups of pine nuts can Olive purchase? That gives us a variable for X. But we are going to times that by the 15 because it's $15 per cup. So now that we've created the structure of that equation, all right, we have multiplication within the two blanks and addition, right, because we had a cost times a rate plus a cost times a rate. Uh, now we can actually solve it, okay? So in my first blank, 3 times 6 is 18. All right, so now I'm going to subtract the 18 from each side. And I don't know what that is, so I'm going to use my, my calculator to help me out. All right, so 60 minus 18 gives me 42. Now here, a number and a letter touching is multiplication, right? So to unmultiply this, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by the 15. Oh, there's quite a delay in my, uh, <laughs> in my sending there. All right, so 42 divided by 15 gives me 2.8. So that means that Olive could purchase 2.8 cups of pine nuts if she has $60. Uh, this problem does ask you to write your answer in a sentence. So I'm going to do that. So she can buy 2.8 cups of pine nuts. All right, so when you guys get to your test, make sure that you answer it as a sentence in the blank that they give you.